Hey. All good. We are here to give some uh, some advice to some of these people that may need some, but uh, you have a pretty big weekend on your hands, do you? I do, and it is one of the reasons why I feel qualified to give advice and on love and relationships. I am celebrating my 12th wedding anniversary tomorrow. All right, congratulations. Yay! My lovely wife, Debbie, who I think is at home listening, or at least... Uh, from the email she sent me uh, to stop cracking on my daughter's soccer team. <laughs> she's she's uh, making up the couch as we speak. Right, exactly. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure where I'll be sleeping tonight. but uh, You'll rectify it, though. You're Dr. Love. Yeah, right. see, it's not a problem. Rectify the situation. There you go. Be well, fine. you know, I, I was talking about honesty. you got to be honest. And the truth is, they're bad. They're just not, <laughs> they're just not a good team. <laughs> Sorry, honey. Truth uh, hurts. So but you're yeah. the coach. Yeah that, that doesn't, like... yeah, that doesn't say much about my coaching skills, does it? Now maybe say like one of those reverse things. You tell a team that they suck, so it'll motivate them. I don't know how well that works with ten-year-old girls. But well, I mean, come on, it's AYSO. I mean, how good <laughs> can you be if you're games. just, you know, Phil Jackson exactly? Game. That's right. Oh, so I gotta go Zen Master. <laughs> That's right, Absolutely. Zen Master on the ten-year-old. Give them a book All to right. read. So this this week's reading is Cat in the Hat. I want you guys to, you know, really get them this book. Get individual the books to each player. Get the message. Right? No, I got. It. I'm gonna have to visit the library. Great, thanks. <laughs> Good advice. Yeah, Bob. So you have big plans for this weekend, Mike. Uh, what do you guys have? Uh... Actually, yeah, uh, we both work tomorrow, so uh, oh, we had nice. we did our big plans. We went out last night, and uh, and for us, really, uh, we don't go to movies because she falls asleep. It pretty much doesn't matter what movie we go see anymore. She just falls asleep during movies, and we don't like to watch the same kind of movies anyway. She likes all them chick flicks, and I can't, yeah. I can't do it. I yeah. can't. So we just went out to a nice dinner and. Went out. Uh, we went out for a special dessert at a different place afterwards, and you know some drinks, and you know sent the kid off to somebody else's house for the night, and right. hung out, and got a chance to, you know, not have to be parents for a while, get sure. a chance to just be with each other. And it was a nice night. We had a good time. Sounds romantic. Yeah, it's really cool. It was quite. It was very nice to spend some time because you know you get all hectic with the kids sure, and school the kid and consumes, work, you know, and, everything, and you don't have time to right. you know, devote time to your significant other, you know, so. Even, even Dr. Love needs a break now and again. That's what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Now, Everybody needs a break. 12 years, I mean, is a, is a pretty long time, you know, especially nowadays. <laughs> you know, marriage just go. Just <laughs> yeah, say, right? I'm just yep. saying. So what is what is the key between you and your wife to be able to stay together for 12 years? What what? Well, that's funny because uh, when, we, uh, when we got engaged uh, to get married, one of our, well, I would, would, wouldn't really call him a friend, but an acquaintance of ours, a cynical bastard, decided to bet me a hundred bucks that my, what, my, my marriage wouldn't last more than five years. Really? Yeah, this is true. Actual wow. true story. And of course I took him up on the bet and he, he, he paid off. He bought my daughter a hundred dollar savings bond, so that was good. Wow, look at that. Uh, but the truth is, the secret is, uh, is honesty. And I've talked about this before and it's not, people mistake honesty with um with, with uh sharing everything okay that's not the truth you just need to be honest with yourself so that you can be honest with your partner so that you don't want to hide things from them I mean, it doesn't mean you have to share everything in your life all the time but it means that you should be prepared to be able to that there isn't anything in your life that you're not willing to share with your partner you don't want to keep other thing when you start your relationship you got to be open from the beginning to be who you are. Like I told my when we were dating, I told her, look, I, I, I play poker. I play poker with my boys. We play all the time. So deal with it. That's mm -hmm. just part of who I am. I'm going to go play my poker games. And that's not going to change when we get married. That's how it is. So I go play poker. I also told her I wasn't ever going to buy her flowers because I don't believe in flowers. <laughs> all right. I buy my wife flowers. Okay. But I Wait, said... you do buy her flowers? I do buy her flowers occasionally, but... The truth is, that's what I feel about flowers. I think they're kind of, you know, hooey, and uh, there was a, a promo. they die eventually anyway, right? Right. I mean, thanks for, you know, buying me something that I can sit and watch <laughs> die on right, my you know? counter. That's yeah. basically how, how that goes. So, but I know she likes them, so I buy some for her sometimes. You sure. know, it's not like I'm, you know, completely against the idea, but I let her know up front, this is what I think about it. This is how I feel about it. That's who I am. Love me or don't. And if you she know? wasn't cool with that, it was never meant to be. That's what I'm right. talking about. Absolutely. You know, and then you learn, you move on from there. But everything seemed to be cool. So you just kept going and rolling. Now this is a bad hypothetical to put out there, but I'm gonna do it. Um the five year bet. So, yeah. so let's just say for instance, <laughs> six, seven months into this, y'all can't stand each other. Right. And it's like, look, 
I, I don't like you, but you don't like me, but we, I mean, I got money on the line here, so can we, if we could just stick this thing out for, like, you know, a couple more years, how would that, was, was that, would that have been a possibility? I know no. it's, it's hard to, to say because you guys, it's it wasn't, just, it wasn't just, like 10 grand. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. it's just 100 bucks. It's 100 bucks, you know. It's only 100 dollars. Yeah. I would have worked it out. Yeah. Probably would have tried to, you know, get her to pay up half at least. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not sure that would have worked out either, but. Fortunately, that was not a problem. Right, yeah. We got it worked out. We're 12 years in. We're going strong. Everything is good. Right. And people so. always say the big issues when it comes to relationships or why they don't work out is because there's such a communication issue. And you mentioned how being honest and communicating is the best way to go about it. Why do you think there is such a communication? Especially as it happens a lot with younger couples, you know, people who meet each other young in their 20s or even 30s. And for whatever reason, there's just giant communication issues between the two of them. Why do you think that that may be? Well, I think what happens is that um, we try to be the person that we think the person we're with wants us to be mm. instead of being who we are. We are, I mean, the whole courtship ritual is about impressing. Right. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to impress somebody. You're trying to get them to like you. And I'm telling you right now that that has ruined more relationships than anything else. Because if you are trying to get somebody to like you, you are not being you. You need to be who you are all the time. Don't try to get them to like you. They will or they won't. Just be who you are and deal with it. I, one piece of advice I always like to give out to people who are potentially embarking upon a long-term relationship. You're about to be committed with somebody. You know what you need to do? Go to Vegas together. Just the two of you. Go to Vegas. If you can handle a weekend in Vegas together and still be good when you come back out the other side of that weekend, then you're going to be in good shape. Because when you're in Vegas, you, there's no, you can't hide the freak. The freak is going to show up when you're in Vegas. <laughs> the freaks come out at night. They do, and in Vegas especially. So all your freakery is about to show up in Vegas. And if you can get through that together, then you got a really good chance. And if you can't make it in for a weekend in Vegas, then you got to look and see if that's if this is really a relationship you want, you, you know you can do long term. That's a good point. I never I never thought of that before. You know, I mean, because Vegas you have everything. You have the nightlife. You have all the any possible distraction that any relationship could possibly have. That's what I'm saying. Is there? When I mean, it relationships are easy when everything is good. Right. Relationships are easy when everybody's happy, but that's not how life is. We're not always happy people. We have crap that goes on, and we get pissed, and we act stupid, and we say dumb crap, and, you know, we're mean to each other. We try not to be, or at least I hope we try not to be. That would be my advice. Try not to be mean to each other. Right. But you can't help it. You know, you get pissed off. You say something stupid. These are the times when your relationship gets tested. These are the times when you figure out, okay, do, do I really care enough about this person to work through this issue? That's what you got to realize. You know? What about social networks? What do you think about that? Relationships with Facebook or... Well, I, I think everybody makes a lot about uh, Facebook. And, and I don't think that that is a good place to engage your relationship. You need to have your one-on-one -on -one time. You need to have real social time. Uh, you know, having a text relationship is not going to be a long-term benefit or... You know, that kind of thing. I, I, I don't necessarily think Facebook is a great idea for relationships. Puts it out in public. And I've actually, I've heard that before too. I, we're such a texting and Facebooking society nowadays. And we, we, we forgot how to communicate with each other. We forgot how to talk to each other now. Because everything is done through text message and done through Facebook. And people don't know how to interact with each other as like a communal group. I think, I forget, maybe it was Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book about that. And how social interactions affects everything about us, whether it's our health or, or everything else about our entire society. He said there is a uh, group, group that lives in some secluded island that doesn't have cancer, they don't have all kinds of health issues, and he says it's all attributed to them being as a communal community uh, like it was back in the day. And so we're so in our own worlds now with emails and texts and Facebooks, and we can have a relationship with somebody uh, online and not see them for like over a year. Well, and that's another place your freakery can come out, too, because it doesn't matter what kind of freak you are, what kind of freakery you got going on in your world, you go online, you can find somebody who not only thinks it's cool, but wants to join you and, and yeah, do it, that's you know? A, that's a good point. And coming up next on 570 Raw, there's a story of a Facebook problem 
just hurting relationships, and we're going to talk yes. about it more. No way. Wait, so, since, since it was brought up, we might as well talk about it. Yes, we Facebook should. Facebook is destroying lives, people. Oh, no. But not Facebook.com slash AM570 radio. Right. No, <laughs> not at all. Uh, that will save your life. Yeah. So we have you know, a question for Big Mike. That is an approved use of Facebook. That's, That's right. That's one of the only things you should do on Facebook. Pretty much. At the <laughs> only, I said the only thing the you only should number. do. That's it. 866-987-2570 is the number if you want to call up if you have a